JPEG is now 30 years old, and a new image format called AVIF is set to challenge its dominance in the near future. AVIF offers significantly smaller files, with 25% smaller images being typical, but I've seen many shrink by up to 85%, support for HDR for vastly better display, higher bit depth to help avoid banding, lossless encoding, transparency, and more. The only real drawback is that JPEG is more widely supported, but AVIF is rapidly catching up and already supported by 80% of web browsers. In the first part of this video, we'll look at how Windows users can use WebSharp Pro version 4 or later to export directly as an AVIF image. We can go up to the top right menu and choose Recompress Images to AVIF. And in here, we have a simple option to select images we've already created, such as a collection of JPEG images, and just recompress them into the same thing, but a smaller AVIF format. So this is not going to change the cropping, the dimensions, the watermarks, borders. None of that is going to change. This just simply shrinks your images. I'm going to cancel this. And instead, the way most of you will work with this is to export normally with all those options by going over to Settings, General, and under Format, you can now choose AVIF as your exporting space. Now, if you're on Mac OS, you won't see this option because the required third-party plugin is not available for Mac. But later in this video, I'll show you how Mac users can approach exporting as AVF as well. So for Windows users, choose AVF, choose your quality, and you're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do an AVF ultimate and go hit batch, select all my images, and voila, I'm going to have 20 AVF images directly from Photoshop. And you can see here, I've just exported 20 versions of different AVIF images cropped to a 1080p resolution. And what I'm going to do is go back into the panel and I'm going to export again. I'm simply going to go and choose JPEG and proceed on through all the various quality options so we can compare everything at the end. So I'll go ahead and run this and I'll be back in just a moment. At this point, I've run the batch multiple times and sorted the results into folders. And you can see that I've got good high and ultimate quality versions of both AVIF and JPEG, as well as a TIFF export for reference, so it would be in the same 1080p dimensions. And then I added up the file size for each of these 20 image folders, as well as calculating the average per image in that folder. And you can see the original TIFFs here, or the 1080p TIFFs, are 11,000K each, whereas the ultimate quality JPEG got down to 1,590K. But then the AVIF, at the same level of quality, is down to 800K, or about half the size for the same quality, which I think is absolutely incredible. Now, if we compress it a little bit more as a high quality image, the JPEG got down to 500K and the high quality AVIF got down to 330. So again, a nice size reduction. And then at the good level, we got down to 300K for the JPEG and 216K for the AVIF. If we dig into the details, if we go double click into the good folder here for AVIF, we see there's a range of results. So all of these images are exactly 1080p. The only real difference between them is that they have different content. So a simpler image, like this one on the bottom, can compress much more than an image that has a lot of detail. So we see a range from 17k to 355k. And that's the same thing you could see with the JPEG. There's always a big spread. And so in order to help compare these, what I've done is I pulled a couple of images, one with high detail and one with low detail, so we can compare all seven versions of the image to see how they look over in Photoshop. So here I've got a cityscape image, and if I just scale it to 100% zoom on my screen, we'll take a look at the original TIFF here. And then if we look at the worst quality, if we jump down to the good level, there's no discernible difference at 100%. I don't see any change in the image for the JPEG or the AVIF. And so even at the lowest levels of quality, unless you're gonna zoom into the image, you've got a great result, and you should just go ahead and use the good quality in WebSharp Pro. Let's go ahead and zoom into the image all the way to 400% where we'll start to see some differences. If we look at the ultimate JPEG, there's really no difference there. There's some small amount of difference in these lines here, but I'd say it's basically identical. The ultimate AVIF is also, I would say, visually identical. I don't see any differences at all. So both of these look great and I would say have similar quality, but this AVIF was 1100K versus the JPEG at 2000K. So almost half the size with the same quality. If we go down to the high quality level, now we're definitely starting to see some artifacts in the JPEG. I look around this window and I see a lot of noise. I see some loss of the lines in this image here. There's various artifacts here. But again, we're at 400%, so you really have to zoom in to notice this, and most people would not see this difference. By comparison, if we look at the AVIF, I don't see the noise here, 
these lines are, I'd say, a eh, similar level of discernibility. So to my eye, this AVIF at what I'm calling the same quality, I would actually say this is better quality, even though it's much smaller at 516K versus 708K. So we've got a better quality result at a smaller file size with the high here. If we jump down to the good, the JPEG is definitely starting to show some issues. There's more artifacts. We're starting to lose the lines on the side of the building. Quite a bit of noisiness around in other parts of the image. Let's see how the AVIF compares. And with that, I would say the quality difference is actually even more pronounced here. The AVIF to my eyes is clearly better. It's not losing anything other than maybe a little bit of line definition here, but the artifacts we see in the JPEG around the windows or in the other gray parts here, it doesn't exist in the AVIF. So I would say not only did we shrink the image from 430K down to 350, we got a better result. So clearly the AVIF is the way to go in this cityscape image. Let's take a look at another image here. This mountain image is the one that got down to that really small 17K file size. And so let's just quickly compare these. Let's go ahead and just jump right into the 400% level and see how things compare here. So looking at the ultimate JPEG, I see no real difference. Looking at the AVIF, I see no real difference. So these both look great, even though the AVIF is at 173K versus 673 JPEG. So the level of compression on this AVIF is minus 74% compared to a similar quality JPEG. So really improved the size of this image. Look at the high quality. I'm definitely starting to see a difference here. There's a little bit of artifacting around the border and the detail is kind of lost. What I would call film grain in the original is kind of lost. But again, we're 400% and you wouldn't normally see this kind of detail. Looking at the AVIF, we don't have the artifacts around the edges, but we also don't have like kind of noise here. Things look a little more smooth in the open areas. So I would say the JPEG has some potential advantages but they're really slight in this case. Overall, I would say the quality between these two is very comparable, but we went from 131K down to 26K or 80% smaller. So this is vastly smaller. And if you wanted to improve the quality of this, you certainly could with plenty of room to still be smaller than the JPEG. And then jumping down to the good quality, we absolutely have some issues here with a lot of artifacting around this border in the JPEG. And again, no real texture. Looking at the AVIF, we don't have any texture here either. I'd say there's even more loss. We don't have that nasty artifact around the edge. And I would say that the JPEG is higher quality in this case because it doesn't, or I'd say the AVIF that is, has better quality because it doesn't have the JPEG issues that are going to be more visible here. And yet we still went from 81K down to 17K or 79% smaller. So that's how we can do things in Windows. Let's now look at a second method for exporting that'll work on any computer, including a Mac because you notice the settings when you're on a Mac will not show an AVIF option simply because the required third-party plugin does not exist for Mac. It's a Windows-only plugin. But it's not a problem. We can choose TIFF, and in doing so, we'll get a TIFF file that's perfectly suited to be opened up in Adobe Camera Raw and then converted to AVIF. So this is just a temporary file set up for that conversion, and it also includes our sharpening, our cropping, our watermark, our border, anything we may want to do with this image all gets processed into that temporary TIFF. Now, before I do it, I also want to mention something else about my images here. This is a 32-bit HDR image created from an original SDR. So my bottom layer is suitable for showing on non-HDR monitors, standard dynamic range monitors. It's suitable for printing, but then these upper layers bring out that brighter content in the HDR range. And I want to get both versions as an export. This bottom one I can share wherever HDR is not supported. And then when I export this version, I can use it to look even better on an HDR monitor. By labeling the bottom layer or the bottom group as SDR, what I'm doing is I'm telling the panel to export everything as an HDR, but then do a secondary JPEG export of just the SDR image. So I get both exports in one. So I'm gonna export this image, this one, and this one, and all three have that same setup with an SDR version on the bottom. So when I go into my settings, the TIFF is going to be used to export the whole image as it is, but then it's also going to export a JPEG in my selected quality using just that bottom layer or bottom group. So the high here is affecting the quality of that JPEG. So we go ahead and click on batch. I'm going to say, yep, use all open images. 
and the panel is letting me know that it has detected I'm using that approach to export both the HDR and the SDR version. So I'll just say OK and let the batch run. And then I'm going to go and close my source images since I no longer need them. And I've got my exported images here. And you see I've got six images where I've got an SDR JPEG and an HDR TIFF for each of these. If I just open up one of these here to compare, we'll see that here is my HDR TIFF. Looks beautiful. And then here's my JPEG and SDR. And so this image, of course, is done. But my TIFF, I need to still convert this to an AVIF. Now, if I were to go and say, you know, filter uh, Adobe Camera Raw, the camera filter here, you'll notice there is no option to save as an AVIF. We'll only get this option when we're directly opening the image right into this interface, not when it's already been opened up in Photoshop. So we need to close this. And we didn't get that import dialog for a simple reason that we didn't set a preference. Let's close this. And we need to change a preference. We'll go to Photoshop, Preferences, File Handling. We want to go to Camera Raw Preferences. And there's two things we need to do. One is we need to change the file handling section for TIFF. And we need to make it say automatically open all supported TIFFs. When you choose this option, then it will open a TIFF if it has a single layer. And that layer is a regular layer or a background layer, but it's not a smart object. It'll open it up in Adobe Camera Raw where we'll have that option. The other thing we need to do is go to the technology previews here for Adobe Camera Raw and make sure HDR output is selected. This not only gives us the ability to edit and export HDR, it also enables the AVIF and JPEG XL file format. So you won't see these file format options unless you've enabled this and then you restart Photoshop if you toggle this setting. So we'll say OK. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to open up my TIFFs again, but I'm going to select all three TIFFs. I'm just holding on Command or Control to select all three at once, bring them into Photoshop. And because I changed that setting, they all open up in Adobe Camera Raw where I crucially have this new option to save them. But before I click on that, I also want to note that the HDR button is toggled on. If you use WebSharp Pro to create this flattened TIFF, then this will automatically be selected for you and you're ready to go. If you're manually creating this without WebSharp Pro, just be aware that oftentimes this button will not be checked depending on how you processed the image. So not something you need to worry about if you have WebSharp Pro, but if you don't, check each and every image to make sure it's OK. Now, we created all these in one batch, and I want to export in one batch. So I need to select all three at once if I just shift click so that all three are selected in the film strip. Now I can create my AVIFs all at once. So I click on the Save option where we get the Save dialog. And again, this only appears when you open it. And you'll only get the option for the AVIF format if you turn on that HDR technology preview. Now, there are several different options in here. I like to use to save in the same location. I don't generally name this because I do that in the panel. I don't generally do the resizing or sharpening because I do that in WebSharp Pro. But you do want to enable HDR display for sure with that HDR on, and then you can choose your color space, which generally should be HDR Rec 2020. And then in the, AVF, in the AVIF file format areas, you can choose your metadata, which I would just leave at all because WebSharp Pro will manage metadata for you, and choose your quality, which I would say generally you should stick in a range of probably 8 to 11, but you could go as low as 6 or 7 if you want to and see how that looks for you. So I'm going to leave it at 8. I'll click on Save, and I can already just close this and switch back, and we'll see that we now have our AVIF version of these images created from those TIFFs. And I can just take my TIFFs, now that I've done that, and simply delete them. Now click on this next video to learn more about HDR.